Greetings, Keechlings. Keech Prime here with my live reaction of One Piece, chapter 1086. The last chapter for a while because it was announced a few days ago that Oda is going on a month long break. So either this will be like the chapter that was supposed to release after the break, or so this is going to be like a four or five week hiatus, which is sad given all the big stuff that's been happening in recent chapters. But hey, a lot of time to theorize. Let's see, we've got Garp, Luffy, and Kobe on the cover. Interesting. It almost looks like they're announcing a movie or something, but maybe not. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I saw this color spread um, when I was checking for the translation, and I couldn't help myself. Um, I noticed one thing in particular. Jimbe and Zoro, for some reason, are not here, but all the other Straw Hats are. Plus, random cat and frog. So, yeah. <clears throat> but other than that, I like it. <laughs> no rain, no rainbow. And Frankie just back there being a mad lad riding through the puddles. <laughs> But anyway, let's see here. And so the curtain drew closed on the reverie before the news of King Cobra's murder came to light. Also, we're not even going to find out what the hell the Gorosei are. <clears throat> Wait, what? The five elder planets? Oh, yes, because Jupiter. Uh, Saint Garcia. This is Princess Vivi of Alabasta. Hasn't anyone seen her? Oh, poor Igram. Where is the king? Oh, that's, that's uh, what's his name? I forget. The guy that turns into a jackal. Has his condition worsened? All, and Pell's out there just flying like a madman. All the while, a number of stowaways held their breath as they attempted to escape on various royal vessels. Okay, so all the prisoners that were freed are now going about trying to flee further from this land. Including Vivi and Wample. Alright, wait, did they stow away on frickin' Morgan's ship? Was Morgan's even there? Um, is that how they got there? Hey, whose ship is this? The Aegis Kingdom. What? We're on Aegis ship, Morgans. What? Gotcha. We'll fly our headquarters over and pretend to look for a scoop. Use that chance to hop aboard and don't get yourselves caught before then. Okay, they're literally just teamed up with Morgans already. Okay. Uh, Roy, I guess they're wanting to get the news out to the world what they saw. Uh, let's see here. I owe you one. You got that right. A king somehow became the subject of a manhunt. This is big news. I can't wait to hear all about it. So what exactly did you see in there, Womble? Oh yeah, I guess she really didn't get to see much. Uh, like I tell you, leave me alone and go back to your own ship. I can't. CP0 is no joke now that they're after me. I won't matter how much everyone tries to help. Those agents won't rest till I'm back in their custody. Back in their custody? When was he ever in their custody? Uh, or is he talking about Marines and the go world government in general after his fall in Drum Kingdom? I don't know. <clears throat> but then again, was he ever... It, now I'm just confused. Anyway, let's see here. Now let me borrow your transponder, Snell. I need to talk to my father as soon as possible. Well, he did. He did, girl. He's a total worry ward. Anything but that. Get lost already. What's wrong with you? Okay, there's Ijazero, and they're looking for Vivi as well. Interesting. And, of course, that fucking Charlie, whatever his brat name is, he loves Vivi. Uh, let's see here. Oh, they're also looking for Sabo. And, okay. So, Bonnie stowed away on the Tajini Kingdom ship hatch section. Alright. And then, 
Wait. Oh, that's Sabo. The Lucina Kingdom ship. Oh, so this is before it got blown up. If I can just make it to Lucina. I know I can figure something out. <laughs> well, considering what happened there. I'm counting on you, Sabukun. Oh, wait, is that... Oh, those were the king's last words. You must live on. Yeah, so you got injured pretty badly back there. All right. Um, I mean, we did see him like a, a... I think he was still a little patched up after all that. So, yeah. Shame we don't get to see any of that. Oda. It didn't, it didn't take that long for the two key stories to spread across the globe. The murder of King uh, Cobra of Alabasta and the disappearance of his daughter, Princess Vivi. The Holy Land of Marijola, the man they call Sabo. So now they're in their human form, but I'm assuming we're going to learn something about them given that they're literally the title. He seems to have a checkered past. How else can you account for him constantly being surrounded by those who dare the letter D. Okay, so they just, dang. Wait, what? Ring, ring, clank? Why is it clank? <laughs> Sounds like you hung up. Yes, great emo. I, I was hoping we'd be able to see to the egghead issue now, but it seems that dealing with this complication will have to take priority. So what is this? Um, the whole thing with the Lushina King, you know, maybe? I don't know. Pangea Castle, Flower Room. The time has come to put Vegapunk's invention to the test. Use the Mother Flame. Vegapunk made an invention called the Mother Flame. Wait, is that what destroyed the kingdom? <laughs> is it true we haven't had the chance to try it out before now, so there's no way to assert its effectiveness yet? Depending on how well this experiment goes, Egghead may be uh, may reconsider its response. I think a forest area would be more suitable testing grounds than a, a sea-based target. Lulushina Kingdom. So he just said, he's like, fuck, quite a lot of people live there. That is of no consequence. Why does he want to attack there? Um, the world... M Understood. The world moves at the will of the creator. What is the reason for Lulushina's selection? It's close proximity. What? It shall be as you say. And then we know what happens. I will make necessary preparations. I humbly request your patience in the meantime. So that's... Oh, they have separate titles? Okay. So... J. Garcia Saturn is the defense science warrior god. Oh my god, we're learning all their names. I'll never remember these names. They're very weird. Um, then you've got St. Marcus Mars. He's the, the big mustache. Well, not the big mustache, but the like kind of old man mustache and beard combo with the long hair. Um, he is environmental warrior god. Okay. Then you have the, um, uh, crap, what was his name? Uh, Gorbachev looking dude. His name, or he is the justice warrior god, Topman. Hello, Topman. Um, Valkyrie. Uh, it's kind of... Valkyrie? Why isn't his name a planet? That's kind of weird. Is that like an old name for, like, let's see, Vulcan? Vulcan was not a planet. Hmm. Maybe this is an old name for a planet back in the day. Um, then you've got the Gandhi Man, Finance Warrior God, Ethan Baron V. Nazjuro. Okay, that is not the name I was expecting for him. And finally, with the guy that everyone thought was related to Sanji, the agriculture warrior god, Shepherd Jew Peach Peter. Hello, Peter. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Lulushina's citizens show sparks of rebellion recently. 
we may be able to make an example out of them. And if we could use, or if we could one day use this power freely, we could instantly snuff out any protract, or any protracted conflict. One more time. Of course. Retrieve Vivi. As you wish. What does he want with Vivi? It, it, I'm kind of wondering. Maybe he he's a spurred lover of Lily, And because she supposedly looks like Vivi. Like maybe he's like. Hi we'll make it happen this time. <laughs> there will be no objections to my love. <clears throat> or something like that. Anyway. Meanwhile. The kingdom of Tajini and the Egypt kingdom are both rebelling between the disbanding of the seven warlords and the uprisings in the government affiliated nations. The navy has its hands full. However, oh my god, they made them. We have Crocodile, we have Gecko Moria, and we have Doflamingo. Our little baby robot clones. Oh, Lord. What? I assume their names are going to be obvious of, respectively, in the order that I saw them. Crocodile, Gecko, and Flamingo. <laughs> um, let's see here. Deployed the Seraphim. Crocodile was spotted on... Uh, Empty Bluffs Island. Their military power has gone in a new direction. So what are they going to literally send Crocodile against Crocodile? <laughs> that would be funny. The second we docked at Lulushina. Okay, so that's a present shot there. The people arrested King Seki and Prince, uh, Princess Komane. They were just waiting to ambush the royals. Since I was a stowaway, they opened me... They welcomed me with... Oh. Well, that'll have to wait for now. Um, since I was a stowaway, they welcomed me with open arms. That's when I saw the papers and found out that they pinned King Cobra's murder on me. Unsurprisingly, the people there considered me a hero. I wanted to tell them the truth, but when I saw how that lie fanned the flames of rebellion within them, the words died in my mouth. Hmm... People and the others had already inspired a lot of them, and I ended up bringing many of those hopeful recruits back with me. Okay, we saw that. I couldn't make direct contact without any encryptions now, so I rerouted my call through the island while we were setting sail. Okay, so that's how he did it. I knew the government would intercept the signal, but doing it like that was sure to fool them into thinking I was still on the Lushina. However, I was just within range, having already set out to sea with our new enlistees. So the uh, annihilation of Lushina really did happen during that call. Yeah, everyone on board was hysterical. A lot of them had family on that island. They saw their country obliterated right in front of their eyes. Despicable. How in the world did they do it? An enormous shadow seemed to engulf the sky above us. And the next moment, everything was gone. An enormous shadow? Hmm. There's no way it was caused by a living thing or some natural disaster. Something pitch black was flying above the clouds. It's called Mother Flame, so I don't fully get why it would be a shadow. <coughs> Sabo, earlier you said they used the name Emu. Right, they may be a little out there, but... Or this may be a little bit out there, but when the world we know today was created 800 years ago, one of the first 20 sovereigns, Vos, uh, I almost said Satan, I mean he kind of is, um, Saint Umu of House Naruna. Now look at this. Okay, so we're getting lore finally. Since we know a, an ability, uh, Granting eternal youth is said to exist. That must mean someone has used it before, right? Which means there's a person out there that didn't need to worry about death. So you think the one I saw is... 
It could be a coincidence. Maybe they just share the same name, but could anyone else but a founder uh, command the five elder planets, the highest of world nobles? The celestial dragons fancy themselves as the descendants of gods, after all. One more thing. Assuming the objection you saw, the object you saw above the clouds was a weapon made of, by the government, then the only one capable of creating such a thing would be Vegapunk. Hold it, Iva. Vegapunk would never intentionally design a dedicated killing machine. I know. So what if it was an ancient weapon? Assuming Emu has been living since ancient times, there is a connection. This is true. Uh, maybe he built the ancient weapon or recreated it because they couldn't find the actual Uranus weapon and they call it Mother Flame, but that would be kind of stupid. Or he upgraded the weapon. Um, <clears throat> Robin told us the ancient weapons do in fact exist, but... <clears throat> excuse me. But if this person had such a weapon, why wait till now to use it? Present day, the holy land of Marijola, a celestial dragon has been sentenced to death. Oh my god, it happened. Um, our food supply is gone, eh? We have no bread. All we have is cake, eh? <laughs> However, this information will never be reported to the outside world. <laughs> okay, we have Crescent Face Man. Um... Alright. The judge was the former king of the land known as God Valley. What? He currently serves as the Supreme Commander of the God's Knights. Oh my god. His name is Saint Garling Fregarlin. Okay. The man he sentenced to execution, none other than the one who chose to defend Fishman. I knew it. Mozagard was going to die. Saint Doflamingo, or Don Quixote, not Doflamingo, but uh, Mozagard. Anyone who protects scum is lower than the scum they protect. A man who can even judge the celestial dragons, and we're on a break for five weeks. But yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, notes, all this stuff, and yeah, all right. Okay, so either <clears throat> the Mother Flame is Uranus, which means, yeah, you know, two weapons technically exist out there, one being in Wano, one being at the bottom of the sea, and maybe the government has Uranus, the third weapon. Or it's a completely new weapon that they just call the Mother Flame. Like I said, there's not that much of a connection necessarily with Uranus. Uranus was the father of the gods. So Mother Flame seems kind of like in the other, you know, uh, direction there. So, <coughs> uh, hmm. Actually, no, wait. Uranus wasn't... He was the grandfather of the gods, technically. Because he was Zeus and Hera and all them's father. So, hmm. Now I'm conflicted. I don't know what to think. Or it's an upgrade or something that maybe was a recreation of the weapon based on what Emu was able to remember and gathered. And they sent the information over to Vegapunk, you know, with him being affiliated with the government and all that. Hmm. Bit of skin there. Um, <laughs> a lot of skin all over my hand. Just a little bit. I'm going to eat it. Um, but yes. So maybe that's what it's based on or something? I'm not really sure. Um, but now we know what happened to the island. It was a weapon that we already knew there was something, but now we're getting a little more information about it. We now know the names of all of the Gorosei. They have weird-ass names. Only two of them are named after planets, which is kind of weird, so I'm probably going to have to go look and see what these other names are translated. Maybe they're like old names of planets. Because, I mean, at one point, we only knew of so many planets, and I think some of them got renamed over the 
century and millennia since their discovery. So, you know. Um, <clears throat> so that would make sense. Also, a former king of God Valley, or the descent... Well, no, wait. Did it say he was the actual king? Let's see here. I gotta look again. If so, then that means he's 800 years old. Former king of the land... Well... Yeah, that would mean that he is also that old. If th the way they're saying this so he is yet again another immortal man hmm and I guess the Gorosei are also that to an extent because they've literally been ageless for decades so <clears throat> but yeah and this man looks old as well so I'm kind of wondering what Emu looks like when he's not silhouetted is he also old like you won't die, but you still gradually age. Just, you know, not to an effect where it's going to make you look like skin and bones, necessarily. So, hmm. But it's interesting to know that Mozagard is going to be killed. And he's actually up on what looks like the, the symbol of the world government as like a cross. So, it's interesting that God Valley, the place where the pirate king fought all those years ago, this is their former king. And he is the judge, jury, and executioner of celestial dragons. So, he must be of the supreme law. He's also the commander of the uh, God's Knights, which is interesting. So, he must be pretty damn powerful. Hmm. I do like his crescent hair, though. Like, that that's pretty nice. I, I, I have to give him props for that. But, uh, yeah. That's about all I have to really say about the chapter. Um, I'm sure there's other things I could have said, but they're just not coming to me. So, let me know in the comments. What was your favorite part? Any thoughts, theories, opinions, anything I missed, misunderstood? Hmm, excuse me. Let me know down below. Check out my other content. See what you like. Suggest things for the future. Um... Oh, <clears throat> I just remembered. Okay, Vegapunk has been trying to come up with a theor or a a theoretical power source that would power anything, but everything else is like it diminishes because you know it takes stuff to make energy. What if the Mother Flame was supposed to be that? It wasn't made as a weapon. It was made as a ultimate power source, but it's been fashioned into a weapon. Kind of like the arc reactor in Iron Man. You know, it was meant to, as uh, Slade said, it was to shut up the hippies. <laughs> it's like green energy, boom. But then it powers a weapon. <laughs> you know, first Iron Man and then Slade, of course. But, um you know, his warmonger suit. So, yeah, but... It, I, I could see a parallel there. It's like, yes, I've made a power source that theoretically could power the world. Holy crap, I'm calling it the Mother Flame because it gives birth to so much life and power. And then they turned it into a weapon, and he's like, you motherfuckers. Yep, we fucked your Mother Flame, and it was hot. <laughs> That was stupid. But anyway, uh, let me know your, all your thoughts and opinions, all that good stuff. Links down below for all my social media so you can keep up with my content and have ways to contact me. I stream on Twitch, Reddit, Gaming, and I'll tweet out when I go live. Part of the One Punch Man podcast on Grim Ripper's channel, so go check that out. And as always, later days. Until next time, Keeshlings. <laughs> I fucked your flaming mom.